All right. <clears throat> What's up, YouTube? Today I am with a very uh, close friend of mine that I've uh, learned to learned a lot about over the past few months, uh, Luke Gowdy, and we're going to be talking about John chapter six and ten, and specifically how those verses relate to the debate between Calvinists and Arminians. And Luke is going to be arguing that these verses actually, or these chapters actually, support an Arminian um, understanding of election. So. We're going to have all kinds of awesome questions about election coming in. I'm sure if you guys already know what questions you want to ask, feel free to start putting them in the chat so that Luke has a chance to think about them. Before I get into that, just want to let you guys know that we put nearly 140 subscribers on last month, which makes us, you know, almost one of the biggest channels on YouTube. <laughs> Not exactly, but we're getting there, guys. And, uh, you know, if you guys are enjoying the process of watching these videos, uh, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed, then uh, support the content by sharing it or clicking any of the uh, links in the description below to support me in furthering my education. Now, with that said, how's it going, Luke? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Now, Luke, <clears throat> um, are you a student at a seminary or university currently? No, I'm, I'm done. I, I attended Trinity Evangelical Divinity School for a while. Mm -hmm. um, it was really easy for me because their first extension classes they had, there's no internet back in the in the early 80s. Okay. Uh, th that was in my church. And uh, I could go to those classes real easily. You know, it was just down the street uh, from me. And uh, I was in church a lot for all sorts of reasons. I used to just hang out in the library before the seminary was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, that's kind of how when I, I didn't like youth group because I was socially awkward. I already had a girlfriend who I intended to marry at the age of 13. And I did marry her. Oh, um, wow. Uh, so I would skip the youth group because the boys were stupid and I was kind of, you know, socially awkward. So I would go and hide in the library and I would start reading books, you know, leave a teenage boy alone in a library. He's going to be reading all these theology books, right? Yeah. So I'd, I'd sneak out to the church library and I'd read those books. And that's kind of, I was, you know, I was a Southern Baptist, non-Calvinist kind of kid. And I mm -hmm. started reading books and I I kind of changed my view and, and I held that view. Um, probably, you know, sometimes people say, well, you weren't really a Calvinist. Well, I probably qualify as one of those because I never believed in limited atonement. And that's kind of like one of the checklists these days, you know, <laughs> not, not with John Calvin because he didn't believe it. Yeah. But uh, um, uh, in Romans 9, I never, I thought there was something uh, cultural going on there that I didn't understand because the interlocutor and in, chapter three was saying some things in chapter nine. I could never figure that out. I, I did eventually. And when I was in seminary uh, taking classes, I, uh, I, I was taking a systematic theology course and I, I had that, the view I was holding and I was like, no, this doesn't make sense. At the same time, I was just slowly collecting Armenian books and um, I didn't really believe it, but I realized my professors weren't representing it properly. Yeah. And I would say things in class and <clears throat> uh, sometimes they didn't like that. You know, they yeah. didn't they didn't want me to correct it. So to make a long story short, I here I am. <laughs> yeah. No. I kind of just converted slowly. Yeah. And I want to comment on two things. First, as a student pastor, I just want to say all of the kids are socially awkward. So like it's just a given to me that if you're in student ministry, that everyone's socially awkward is just a matter right. of who's, who's comfortable with being uh, in those awkward situations. Yeah. And then the second thing is, um, man, it, it does seem like the thing that Calvinists do the, the most to hurt their cause is to misrepresent um, people. Like when I, my first systematic theology was written by R.C. Sproul and I loved it. Yeah. Uh, but when I heard him speak about Arminianism and then when I hear John Piper speak about Arminianism and, and some of these other well-known pastors that kind of introduce you to those issues online, and then you actually read Arminian theologians, Right. You are, you, from there on, from there on out, you become suspect of what you know. Some of these reformed pastors have to say, and then of course you get more into the academic um, side of things. And I would write letters to I, if I saw someone doing something, I thought I could possibly give them a better answer. I would write to them, and I I read, write, wrote to Armenians as well as Calvin. Yeah. I write to everybody. Yeah. So yeah, and as far as like not. Not actually being a Calvinist. I mean, no, none of us are actually Calvinists. I mean, <laughs> Calvin wasn't actually a Calvinist. So only, only you, right. the Calvinists at home watching this, are a true Calvinist. <laughs> none of us yeah, pretend yeah. to be. <laughs> right. uh, okay, so so we're going to be talking about John chapter six and uh, John chapter ten. But before we get into that, 
Um, you want to talk a little bit about John chapter 3, verse 20, and how, you know, that's going to provide us some context for what we're going to be looking at in John chapter 6 and 10. I have my Bible with me if you want me to do some reading. Okay. Um, well, so the, the three verses from chapter 6 all have the phrase, come to me. Uh, I'll just read them off, and then I'll, we can go to John chapter 3 there. Um uh, John 6.37 says, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me will certainly not, I will certainly not cast out. John 6.44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. And then John 6.65, For this reason I've said to you, no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him from the Father. So, um, one, one of the things, like when this discussion goes on, there's this intense uh, uh, <clears throat> focus on these three verses at the neglect of the fact that come to me has been mentioned earlier in the, in the, the book. And it's mentioned in uh, uh, John uh, 3, and then it's mentioned in uh, John 5. So I just like to do John 3, and I actually probably should have mentioned that I'd like to touch on John 5 until we, and then we'll just jump into John 6. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you want to read that verse? Yeah. So we're talking about John 3 verse 20. And we just want to show that the idea of coming to Jesus doesn't just start off with John 6. Like John, yeah. John 6 is not the first time he talks about this. So you could do 20 and 21, please. Okay. So, so Jesus says this, uh, for everyone who does evil hates the light. And does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifested as been having wrought in God. I, that's just a good verse, period. I think that's a, <laughs> you know, that deserves a sermon. But yeah, go ahead and say what you want yeah, to say. So, about I mean, it's, it's kind of lofty. Uh, and whenever you find, you know, it's, it's interesting in, in um, John, uh, 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 the, John the Baptist is mentioned throughout the book at key places in st for strategic ways. And right after this is mentioned, John comments and he affirms what basically what Jesus had said just above mm -hmm. from 316 down to here. Yeah. Um, but so let's just kind of like uh, um, unpack this a little bit. Um, so there are people who do wicked things and they don't like the light and they don't come to the light, uh, at least their work should be exposed. And this word, word exposed here is used in chapter 16 as well. And it, it's, it's about shame and uh, fear of the light because the light is saying something or telling them something they don't want to, to hear. Uh, probably like you're wrong is very often a thing you don't want to hear, right? But uh, uh, then it says, whoever practices what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Now, in God there is probably means in union with God. Uh, it can mean a couple of different things. In the spirit of God, probably doesn't make sense. Uh, but uh, so the interesting thing here is um, the ones that come to the light are those that are practicing truth. Um, they didn't have the light exposed to them, and then they practice truth. They were actually practicing truth prior to the light coming. Um, uh, then once they see the light, they come to the light, and that what they are, what they've been doing can be revealed now, probably to God and to other people. Um, but uh, so that's, that's what's going on there. Now, in this context, uh, he's going to out to Israel and they are either believing or not believing, but what this is going to get to, and this is what this is kind of alluding to is the fact that some uh, would have already a relationship with God, the father. And these are the people that are not going to be afraid of the light, but there will be people who, for whatever reason, they have not, uh, 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 agreed with the truth. They have followed the truth. They've set the priorities on pleasing people rather than themselves. This is mentioned in John chapter five. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, 
that's what I think is going on. Now you can say, Luke, uh, you know, I, I mentioned to this when I first mentioned this to someone, the guy said this to me, he's, my, he's actually my best friend. But, uh, and, and we, we we're always joking. Like when he says this stuff, he says, you must be smoking crack. And he, <laughs> he, he, he and I've always used that phrase since then when I talk about things like this, because he's, uh, Jared is a really funny guy. But uh, so I just read one more verse and, and then we'll go on to chapter five, um, John chapter 837. Now, if you think like, like, uh, uh, hold on, Luke. I just want to mention on 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 Job chapter three that, um, and I don't know. Maybe you see this as also being included in what you're saying. But in the context of what Jesus is doing with Nicodemus, I feel like there's this literary feature of Nicodemus actually coming in the night, and so it's like this okay. kind of yeah, yeah. So saying like, look, those who are making a practice of the truth are going to be coming to me in the light. Uh, those who are not <laughs> making a practice, like literally, will not be coming to me. Because their yeah. deeds are evil. I mean, there are some really great books out there on, on the symbolism and stuff that bring that out. But that is, that's actually part of it. Uh, 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 that's a good point. You must have gone to seminary, I think. But, <laughs> uh, so, so you know, you say, Luke, well, that's kind of a weird interpretation. Well, in John 8.37, this kind of, uh, I'm sorry, John 18.37. Okay. Uh, I'll wait for you to get there. Yeah, you want me to go ahead and read that off? Yeah, you can read it. Uh, uh, you could read the whole thing, I guess. Yeah. Okay, 18, 37, and 38? Um, I have 13, unless I wrote it down wrong, just 37. Okay, just verse 37. This is uh, the context of Jesus' um, trial before okay. Pilate. Mm -hmm. Pilate says, uh, so you are a king, Jesus answered. You say correctly that I am a king. For this I have been born, and for this I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth, hears my voice. Okay. So of the truth, that's genitive. It's possessive. It's, they belong to the truth. They identify with the truth. Uh, some commentaries say, listen to the truth, but I'm glad you used that interpretation because everyone who's of the truth, hears my voice off. It really sounds like uh, my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, is what he's saying is complements what we read in, in uh, John uh, three eighteen, and he's saying that he's coming into the world, and these people who um, are uh, uh, identify with the truth, they will know who he is. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a broad statement, but it has a specific context. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, it's a. A broad principle within a specific context here. Yeah. So we have two verses kind of like that. But what I want to do is just plant the seed here because there might be people who are like, Luke, you know, you say crazy stuff all the time. And this is one of them. Uh, so we'll just see if this theme pans out as we progress through the book of John. And we'll go to chapter five and then six. Okay. So so just just be clear what, you, what we've set up until this point. So in, in John 3, you know, the coming to Jesus depends on practicing, you know, good and not evil. And then in, in John 18, what we see is coming to Jesus depends on being of the truth or identifying with the truth. So, so what we're doing is saying, like, Jesus has already set up some of these preconditions on which people will come to him, the terms in which we, we will come to him. Right. It's more like um, uh, that these people have been doing this. Mm -hmm in agreement with God prior to Jesus arriving because they are believing Israelites. Now, okay. if you and I were, were were believing Israelites, I almost want to say Christian Israelites, right? I mean, but this is pre-Christ. We're, we're converts. We believe it. We're the genuine believers. Mm -hmm. Now, wouldn't you be shocked if Jesus came and God left you behind? It would be really yeah. like you, you trust God. He's going to take care of you. And Jesus came, you got left behind, and you're like, I missed it, <laughs> but this is not what's going on here. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, these, the, the, the idea here is that he's coming to a community, and this community has people who like the truth and people who don't like the truth and people who need to like the truth, and Jesus is going to tell them you need to like the truth. Uh, but when Jesus comes into the community, and we're going to see this theme, we're really going to see this theme as we progress. And so I just, I'm planting a seed here because, there's people rolling their eyes right now, some some people, but not a lot of people. And I wish, like I was going to say, I 
I, uh, whenever I prepare for something like this, I think about what did I think before I held my view? Mm -hmm. And I can do that with almost any book of the Bible, almost any verse. I cannot remember how I changed from what my view was to what it is now. It just happened. Okay. Good, good. And so I don't, you know, I wish I could, I had that skill today, but I don't. Okay, guys. So we're just trying to do some backtracking then. All right. Yeah. All right. So now you want to look at John. We want to look at these coming verses in John 6, 37, 44, and 65, right? Yep. So we did the coming verse. Verse. This is the second one that we're going to touch on. But the coming verse in John 3 was basically people who identify with the truth mm -hmm. are going to know Jesus. They're going to be able, they're, they're the ones that are going to trust Jesus. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, in this community, uh, this is an issue with, with the Israelites. It's the inner Jewish conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in John chapter 5, he's talking to people who end up not believing. They don't believe to start with. And he's pointing out a couple things about them. But the interesting thing is, is um, in uh, uh, verse 34, the second half, he says, But I say these things so you, that you might be saved. Now, when I was a Calvinist, that was a throwaway verse. That meant, I remember that. It, it, that was like Jesus is just like, you know, uh, um, saying something and not meaning it. Uh, I don't know that I was a good Calvinist. I've said that before. But that's how I looked at that because these people ended up not being saved. And um, uh, so let's just kind of look at this because down in verse 40, he says, yet you refuse to come to me, there's a come to me, mm -hmm. that you may have life. So what he, I'll just kind of paraphrase and maybe read a little bit here to get an overview. Um, and I'll just skip around fast, but I'll, I'll try to refer to the verses I'm, I'm reading. Um, so here, John appears again. You got to pay attention when John appears because he's a, he's in the prologue. And when, later on, I'll go back to the prologue. I, if I had a lot of time, I'd do this all in order, and uh, but the, doing it out of order saves time for a reason I won't get into. Uh, so uh, he says, "You sent to John, and he is born witness to the truth. Not that I say, not that the testimony that I accept is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved." So he refers to John, and this is ha should have some credibility with his audience. Um, uh, he says. Uh, uh, in verse 36, but the testimony that I have is greater than that of John for the works the Father has given me to accomplish the very works I am doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. So he's got two things, John, mm -hmm. the, the miracles he's performing, and then down at the bottom, uh, uh, probably in the middle here too, he mentions Moses. But in verse 46, he says, if you believe Moses, you would have believed me for he wrote about me. Um, that's an interesting thing to say. Everyone who believed Moses is what that means, would believe Christ. So those who walk in the truth, who practice the truth, who believe Moses, would have believed Christ. But these people don't believe Christ. Um, so here we have another coming, uh, you refuse to come to me, has to mean that you refuse to accept what the Father has taught you, what he's mm -hmm. teaching. Uh, and so we're, so with, uh, with that in mind, uh, you can see how some of these make sense. Like it says, uh, verse 44, how can you believe when you see glory from one another, when you not seek the glory that comes from God? These people really didn't, they, they didn't, they're refusing God's drawing and his teaching uh, all along. And these are, sort of like uh, historical artifacts that they should have identified with, but they don't. Yeah. Um, so because they don't identify with God, they are rejecting Jesus when he comes because he is the, the uh, 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 image of God. Mm -hmm. he, the Father's in him and he's in the Father. And they don't, if they knew God, they would recognize mm -hmm. Jesus, but they don't. So is it, could you, could you put it like this? Basically, if they were good Jews... <laughs> they would have come to him, basically. Jesus said, he, like, you guys weren't even good Jews to begin with, so of course you're not coming to me with right. the, the message that I have. Yeah. 
and it, it was God's responsibility to make sure they understood this, but they refuse it. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the rejecting that's going on here. Okay. Um, uh, okay. You know, uh, verse uh, 41 says, um, or 2, 42 says, but I know you do not have the love of God within you. Now, that's not something you'd say to every Jew at the time. Um, uh, there, there are plenty of examples of him in, in this context saying, you know, uh, that that uh, some do believe and some don't. And mm -hmm. we'll get to that later at the end of uh, chapter 10. But um, so that's pretty good. We, we're on our second come to me verse. Um, and we're kind of getting a flavor. It's kind of getting fleshed out. Okay. That, um, if you believe Moses, you would have believed me, but you're not believing me. Uh, you don't believe Moses, so you not yeah. coming to me. Yeah. That's basically what he's saying. Yeah. You know. Um, good, 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 good. Uh, so we um, we can, yeah. so we got the few verses from John 6, and these in, in the Calvinist interpretation are, Describing God's um, unconditional, irresistible election. And would you hash that out a little bit? So would you just tell us a little bit about how the Calvinist is going to use 37, 44, and 65 to kind of uh, support, you know, their system? Yeah. So how it's often used is um, everyone that's given and everyone that comes and everyone that's drawn are all the same people. Mm -hmm. um, if you're given to the son, it's because the father drew you, and if the father drew you, you will come. Uh, and uh, it's basically talking about the conversion. I often talk about this sometimes uh, in the, when we talk about uh, Calvinism, Arminianism, provisionalism. <laughs> The things that bug me wrong regarding epistemology is everyone drills it down to that point of conversion, and then they're talking about it that way. When this, I'm what I'm talking about is that these people are resisting the Father prior to this, okay. and so there are a couple. There are nuanced Arminians' views. Uh, my view isn't the only view. There are subtle views, but that will all kind of like you'll know. Like uh, it's like a. Uh, 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 two types of animals that are they're the same species but different breeds you know mm -hmm. yeah. that's basically what you'll get with the Armenian view so if I say this I'll be real close to the other views but if you ask me the differences I could tell you uh, uh, but anyone who's listening to me and they have a different view maybe you can borrow some of this stuff if you mm -hmm. don't like my answer so yeah okay um, so that's basically the Calvinist view is all of these things crunch down to uh, giving, drawing, and, and then ultimately coming. Okay, so um, if I'm if I'm just kind of trying to repeat what you said, so everyone who was given to the Son was drawn by the Father, and everyone who was drawn by the Father will come to the Son. So yeah. it's kind of like this, okay. And they probably articulate it much better than I do. Okay. But uh, that's, that's generally the way it goes. Um, I think so far... I've kind of poked a hole in that because the coming to Christ has a context that is informs this. When we get yeah. here, we have a different informed context that coming to Christ has a relationship to the Father prior to believing in Christ, and it has a relationship to the Father prior to even being exposed to Christ in in my my explanation. Yeah, yeah. So already based on what you said, that that second, I guess you might say that second thesis, second premise is if 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 you've been drawn by the Father, then you will come to the Son. Well, at the very least, those who are drawn by the Father have been drawn under some conditions like practicing the truth or um, uh, uh, identifying with the truth or actually being, you know, good Jews in right. Jesus' eyes. Yeah. And is there even a verse here? I'll read it. Uh... Uh, John seven seventeen. it says, uh, if anyone chooses to do the will of God, meaning they're not doing it yet, uh, he will know, he will know if my father's, if my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. So if you do make that decision, God is going to inform you, but this is what God has been doing all along. He's been preparing people who, uh, through, through various means and instruments, he's, he's preparing people 
and he's he's responsible for bringing that in, making us to the point he wants us to be at. Uh, and this is why uh, uh, when we read verse 20, it said, you know, their deeds were done in God. Uh, and, and then uh, in uh, chapter 18, it said uh, 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 something similar. I can't, I can't yeah. I'm looking, I can't remember it, but, but uh, it's, it's, it's in union with God and that's kind of the, uh, the idea there. Okay, so. good, good, good. All right. So, so do you want to walk through those verses again or do you yeah. want to go? Uh, so, so I read them, mm-hmm. but let's just kind of look at them a little closer and, yeah. um, and then talk about my explanation, which would be close to all the others, but not identical uh, that are Arminian. And then probably th- there'll be, responses to the Calvinist view. So in 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 John 37, the, the crowd has come and they've seen him turn uh, uh, the miraculous, miraculous uh, miracle with the bread. And they're like, well, we want more bread, you know, and mm-hmm. and he's uh, and uh, uh, well, Jesus says, you want more bread. That's why you're coming. And they're like, yeah, why don't you, you know, give us more bread? And they're trying to coax him into doing another miracle with bread and they're following him for the wrong reason. Um, and so he's pointing out that, you know, he says, if you, uh, the father, will, uh, the father gave, uh, they said, well, Moses gave us bread. And he's like, no, the father gave you bread, not Moses. Uh, and the bread I'm going to give you, uh, the, the father will give you as well. Uh, or my father is my father gives you well of course they're coming for the wrong reason and so this reason that they're coming for uh is inhibiting their understanding mm-hmm. so he gets down to this point and he gets down to john six thirty seven, and he says all that the father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me i will not cast out um gives here is not it is present tense verb. It doesn't refer to before time, for all eternity. This is a process that Father is giving these to, to, to Christ. And these are people that God is leading to Christ okay. um, through tr- his truthful teaching. Mm-hmm. Now, whether they accept it or reject, that's a different thing. But all that the Father gives me are those, th- those people who follow the truth. Mm-hmm is those who uh, follow the truth to Christ. They come to Christ. Um, and he's, uh, and so uh, here we got the comes verse, comes to me verse, which when we think about it, we've already been informed what comes to me means. Mm-hmm. It means that uh, they've been walking in the light, following the light. And when they see the light, they know it. Okay. But these people don't know it because they haven't been listening to the Father. So, so let me just kind of recap what you're saying. And guys, we got we got a, a handful of you guys on. Feel free to send Luke your questions about uh, election, Arminianism, or John chapter six and ten. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So, on, on your reading, it might say something like this: All that the Father is giving to me is will be coming to me, and I will certainly not cast them out. And by all, Jesus is already based on the context of what we read. We're talking about the people, um, the good Jews who are practicing and identifying with the truth beforehand. So the ones that the Father is giving were the ones who you could say were seeking already mm-hmm. the light. And mm-hmm. and these are the ones that are continually coming to Jesus on the right terms. Right. And and then I would add, like in, when I talked about chapter 5, he gave a sincere invitation. You can become one of those people. Mm-hmm. But in general, you're not. if you're not one of those people, you're not going to be coming. Yeah, uh, that that's that's the general idea behind it. Yeah, and what and, we're what we're going to need for the Calvinist interpretation is that we're going to need that that the giving of the Father is unconditional right. is that, for that to work, um, and that it's just based on um, His will alone. But what we've seen in these verses, at the very least, is that 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 giving is already these are people who've already met some conditions in terms of. Yeah, seeking and later I'll prove that how this is working out in history to John the Baptist, but. Um, for now, we're just kind of like now. Now we got our microscopes out, and we're kind of like digging at the the verses. Um, okay. So in John six forty four, it says, "No one can come to me unless the Father sent who who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up the last day." Um, so for the Calvinist interpretation, it's uh, no one can come to me unless the Father 
Usatmi draws him means um, you're not going to get drawn. And if I you were drawn, you would come. Um, so drawing and coming, they're together, and you'll be raised up on the last day. But grammatically, that's not what this says. Uh, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him uh, does not imply that everyone will come. It mm -hmm. just implies that you have to be drawn. Um, it's sort of like saying, and uh, no one can find my home unless they're giving the their instructions. Uh, you know, it, uh, it doesn't mean everyone given the instructions will find my home. Yeah. Uh, and in the we've already talked, and this is why looking at those previous verses about coming is uh, is profitable here. And especially when we get to verse 45, it says, uh, it is written in the prophets, they will be taught of God. Everyone who has listened to the Father and learned from him comes to me. Um, those are uh, heirs verbs or participles, um, and they're active. So you could say everyone has heard from the Father. Uh, you can emphasize the active part and mm -hmm. say everyone is listening to the listen to the Father um, and learned and or is learning or has learned. Okay. Uh, so, uh, um, so that is a uh, a clarification of what was said before. Gotcha. So. This is um, this demonstrates basically the point is every if someone teaches you, that doesn't mean you learned. Mm -hmm. You can be taught, but you have to listen and learn. Okay. To what you hear. So we know that if we look back in the verse above, this is a necessity. This is a this would be a bad verse or and and uh, explanation to interpret the previous verse if yep. the Calvinist interpretation was correct. Now, uh, and it fits with mine, you know, you can, from your, well, in my house, oh, we, oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, hold on. So, so just to kind of recap verse 44. Yeah. So on the Calvinist interpretation, well, everyone could agree to the first uh, part. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. Okay, we, we haven't settled any theological discussions at that point. Everyone's agreeing to that. Yeah, but what the Calvinist is going to need is this added premise. And if the father draws him, I will raise him up on the last day. But that's not what it says. It just yeah. says, and I will raise him up on the last day. So what you're going to say is that they're going to need to insert that that added premise, you know, to the middle of that, that sentence, you could say, um, in order to kind of derive uh, I guess the irresistible aspect of, or the effectual yeah. aspect of grace. They'll try to uh, uh, make that auxiliary sen the sentence at the end. They'll try to make that part of the condition. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, uh, not that often. Um, interesting, Rudolf Boltman, who is a uh, Lutheran, so would interpret generally these kind of election verses the same. He interprets it the Arminian way. So not everybody uh, who 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 thinks that way will necessarily interpret it that way, uh -huh. but it's very, I just very rare that there'll be a, a different interpretation coming from the Calvinist camp. But, um, you know, you, a teacher can teach and a student can't learn. So what he's telling them is you can't come to me thinking that I'm someone who gives bread because when you, I, I, and I'm doing tricks or miracles like this, because if you look at me that way, you have not learned from the father. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so you can't come to me if you don't look at me the way the Father has taught you. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's that's the general gist of this. And uh, so verse forty five is the, the qualification on the kinds of people that are coming to him, given yeah, by the like, Father. It, it clarifies the previous verse, and um, so there might be a little bit of argument about draws. Now, I don't. You know, I don't know what the percentage of Calvinists that would actually argue about draws. It's it's figurative use of the word, and a lexicon will say, you know, it means draw and attract. Uh, 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 but we have a clarification in verse 45 that the drawing is through teaching, and uh, everyone who listens and learns to the teaching will come to him. So if these people had learned and listened to the Father, and if they will learn and listen to the Father, mm -hmm. They will come to him, but they got to yeah. go back and rethink what they're understanding because they they're not believing Moses. It, yeah. it says if you had believed Moses, you would 
believe me. It doesn't, doesn't say some people who believe Moses will believe me. It says if you believe Moses, you believe me. They don't believe Moses. They have not listened to the Father. Okay, and that's, okay. that's a general thing. Now, um, uh, so there might be a little bit of argument about drawing. And, uh, you know, the Arminian in this context, and, and anyone who isn't a Calvinist, might bring up Nehemiah, Nehemiah 9.30, um, and so uh, I'll read it. You don't have to look it up if you don't want to, because I'm just going to read two verses. I'm going to read the one, uh, verse 26, and then I'm going to read verse 30. Um, so the verse, first verse I'm going to read, it just proves that Jesus is talking about people <laughs> who God was drawing, but they didn't believe. They okay. didn't listen. They didn't learn. Uh, verse 30 is uses the word drew to describe that. And um, I'm not saying that Jesus is thinking of this. I'm just saying, it, as far as the word helco goes and uh, uh, is used, this is a, an example that it's yeah. within the semantic range. And the verse 45, really, I mean, I don't know how you get around that, but, you know, there's differences of opinions with the Calvinists. So, uh, so verse 26 says, nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against you and cast your law behind their back and killed your prophets and who had warned them in order to turn them back from their great blasphemies. It goes on to say God sent the spirit to to inform them through the prophets. But um, verse 30 says, many years you drew them. Some translations will say bore with them and warned them by your spirit through your prophets. Yet. You, yet they would not give ear. Mm -hmm. Basically the same thing. They would not give ear. They would not listen to the spirits through the prophets. They, this is the same word that's used in the previous book. So it's within the semantic range. It's within the mental uh, 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 arsenal that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that you would have. They, that's, yeah. that's basically the word. I don't think it's, wor like, it's worth it for a Calvinist to argue that. Now, if you want verses about people who need to listen and learn to God's teaching, I'll just reference these and not read it, but Luke 6, for people who are taking notes, no. Luke 6, 47 through 49 is a great example, and Deuteronomy 4, 10, there's yeah. examples of God's teaching, and he's telling them you need to listen and learn. Yeah, so, I mean, and even if I understand um, the guy, Robert Shelton, Dr. Shelton, who wrote the book on uh, I, so I, I guess what it comes down to is no matter how you look at the the word drawing, whether it's like the drawing of an immaterial object that is just kind of forcible, or the drawing of uh, or the drawing of a material object which is kind of just like forcible, or the drawing of a persuading you know persuading a person. Ultimately, in either case, the person will have to concede um, in order to be brought to in order for that drawing to have the the effect it's supposed to have. Right. Yeah, okay. I, I I understand that argument. My, my view is really uh, uh, that this is, I'm going in the drawing, as in God's drawing, that we're, that, that there's either uh, a belief in what, in, in, in where God is taking you, or there isn't. And it's, I'm going all the way to the other. Now, uh, uh, those are the people who come to Christ are those who have been trusting God. We've seen that in, in, uh, 320 and this is kind of confirmed here mm -hmm. so however you want to take it uh, there's, there's a number of views here like there's some I mean that will say well if you reject the light you've been given God will stop drawing yeah it's not my view I, I really think it's uh, uh, the teaching kind of thing here really mm -hmm. it undermines that argument a little bit and I could we could do a whole show on uh, episode on that I guess but uh, um, good good, good. Uh, that, that's a, you know, you can defend it with that argument. I, I'm not going to argue that you can't. Um, so John 6, uh, 665, for, he says, For this reason I have said to you, no one can come to me unless it has been given him from the Father. Now, the, he, he's referring to something he said before, which goes back up to these this previous verse. And so he's just, this verse is repeating it, uh, that you can't come to Christ other in any other way than has been given by the Father. Now, the Calvinist interpretation of this is God is withholding it, mm -hmm. and so uh, you won't. 
Now, I, it doesn't seem to me to be possible given this series of arguments we've had, but I mean, series of, uh, of uh, analysis we've had, mm -hmm. but um, uh, this just confirms that those who listen and learn uh, are being given by the Father to Christ and they're being given what they need to come to Christ. Okay, so the question comes down to, well, who does the Father grant? Who does the Father right. give that permission to come to him? And, and you'll go back to 45, those who have been listening and learning. Yeah, it's not, he's not going to give it to any people who aren't listening and learning. So these people who want the, the bread, trying to get Jesus to be the bread maker rather yeah. than than um, the Messiah, yeah. uh, he's not the bread maker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, what do you make of an interpretation? Um, you know, I see most people connect John 6 to John 12, and they say, well, well, this is this is a period in Jesus' ministry where it hasn't been granted to certain people. But then after the crucifixion, um, that granting will come to all people. So that uh, G that's why Jesus says now, uh, I will draw all men unto myself, or the Father will lift me up and will draw all men unto me. Right. And that's kind of part of the alternative Armenian argument okay. that I was alluding to. Um, what I would say to that is this is a general principle with a specific application. Mm -hmm. So these guys, he's, he's talking to them and he's saying, you know, you haven't been listening to God. Uh, 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 God draws. So in both situations, God draws. Um, if you want to argue that that is a specific situation and it's not applicable to other people, okay, but then you've conceded it in chapter 12 with Christ doing that. And um, I would just, my argument is that God draws, uh, the Father draws, and his message is about Christ's salvation, and Christ draws with the same message, but it's fulfilled. So once he's the fulfillment of the Father's message, he draws directly. Okay. So that's that that might split the baby there, uh, but uh, uh, th that's kind of my view is the, the Father draws and Christ draws. And uh, if you want to make a distinction, that's fine, but God draws. Yeah. Okay, so so let me ask you, because we've talked about provenient grace before a couple yeah. times on, on this show. Um, and I think if anybody watches those three conversations that I've had on provenient grace, they'll know that our idiots don't necessarily agree <laughs> on the understanding of provenient grace. So I, I want to ask you this. On your understanding of this text, would you say that this granting and this drawing is universal, something that... Um, is available to all people at all times? Or would you say that it's something that's particular, uh, available to select people at, at specific times? Right. So this can be a general sort of uh, exclusivist argument, and you can also have an inclusivist argument. Um, but I would say, yes, that in all these situations, God is giving uh, light, and people come to the light based upon the truth that they have. Now, uh, uh, with this, it's uh, in, the, in the exclusivist argument, uh, this is the situation all along with God is responsible for informing us and making sure that if, uh, uh, in, well, throughout history, I mean, throughout history, the, the beliefs, uh, 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 the belief system grew and was refined and eventually narrow down to Christ at the end. So, th yeah, this would be the, my answer is that this is the same thing, that people don't uh, uh, believe in God apart from his influence. In that, mm -hmm. uh, okay. So so you're going to say it's a universal thing, but it's coming to to kind of its climax in Jesus. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say that. Okay. Now, there might be ex some really, I, I, mean, I can't even think of the category of exclusivist, uh, that would just say, you know, if you don't hear the specific men message mentioned at that point in history in the Bible, you know, uh, uh, what did uh, uh, Enoch know, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. whatever, then, yeah, it would be a different, different thing that he would be expected to believe, be articulated differently. It wouldn't it'd be a shadow of what we have yeah. today. But it's that kind of thing. So, okay, uh, and God's responsible for that. We, okay. we can't. It's we're not responsible for getting that information. Uh, we can, uh, uh, we can trust in it. We can uh, uh, decide to do the Father's will, but we have to know that the Father has a will. You know. Okay. So. 
Good, good. Okay, so you want to go to, um, you want to talk a little bit about how uh, John the Baptist kind of, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Um, so John the Baptist here is, uh, I mean, he's really important. And if you look at uh, the prologue, there's these soaring pros, you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, these soaring pros. And then all of a sudden you get this like screeching tire car sound and there's a comment about John, you know, and you're all lofty and here's John, you know, and then a little bit more about uh, the children of God and then John yeah. and John keeps popping up and he popped up in chapter three and he confirmed what Jesus said. He popped up in, in John chapter five and, and uh, as someone who was, was a trustworthy witness. And so when John pops up, it's pretty important. And um, uh, he was included in the prologue because he is very important. Okay. Um, so I just kind of want to talk about that. Okay. Um, so uh, John one twenty three. could you? Yeah, John one twenty three. Yeah. All right. I have, he said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Okay, so John the Baptist's role was to make straight the way for Jesus so that the people were ready for Jesus to come. Um, they were being given the truth, which they could walk in to prepare them for Jesus to come. They were being taught by the Father mm -hmm. uh, to be given to Christ when he arrived. And um, some believed and some didn't. Yeah, uh, If they didn't believe, it's because they didn't listen and learn. Um, and so, um, uh, and, and then Luke, we have a, a few minutes on these next ones, but so what you're saying with John is that these, if you're wondering what this class of people, um, yeah. who are teach, who are being taught and listening and learning from the father and practicing and identifying the truth, if you're wondering who those people are, these are the people who have right. been prepared by John or been faithful to the teaching of Moses and, and so on and so forth. So, Nicholas, how much time do we have? I'll, I'll, I'll talk fast. We, we can go 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to read two verses here, and I'll just talk a little faster. Okay. Um, so uh, Luke chapter 1, he says, uh, referring to John, he says, He will bring back many of the people of Israel uh, to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit of power of Elijah to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedience to the wisdom of righteousness. To make people ready, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So he's getting ready for Jesus. Now, Luke 7 is interesting. What about the people who didn't believe? Uh, so Luke 7, verse 29 through 30. It says, All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, okay, they're listening to Jesus now, mm -hmm. acknowledged that God's way was right. So it really sounds like uh uh John uh 3 18 or 20, I'm sorry. Uh when they heard Jesus' word, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. And that's a weird thing to say. Acknowledge God's way was right because they've been baptized by John. Well, yeah, because they believe John. But the Pharisees and experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves. It was God's purpose for them uh, because they had not been baptized by John. Real, radio, a real idiosyncratic way of, of describing that, but that sums it up. Yeah. Uh, so... John the Baptist is, you know, really important. Um, and he's going to appear in John 10. Uh, so let's just turn to John 10. And since we only have a little time, I'll uh, but really flip. And, and just so people are following the structure of the argument, what, what um, Luke has already said from the book of John is that we can see that those who are being given or granted or drawn by the Father are those who were prepared, whether it's through being faithful to the uh, teaching of John, faithful to the teachings of Moses, um, observing the works of Jesus. These are people who were prepared, who were being given. And now you're kind of just reinforcing that. I think definitely reinforcing that by what we just read in Luke. So now right. we're going to John chapter 10. Yeah, and I'm not going to uh, well, I'm not going to start there, but John shows up at the end of John chapter 10, and he's there for a reason. So he, here's a, a Calvinist verse in, in John chapter 10. Is This is one that is very mostly used. It says, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. Well, if they're not his, his sheep, they don't, they, that's why they don't believe. They 
can't believe because they're not a sheep. So are the sheep, who are the sheep? Well, remember in verse when I read uh, verse 1837, it says, everyone who uh, is of the truth listens to my voice. So what I'm going to argue here is that the sheep are those who identify with the truth. They believe God. And when they hear Jesus, they recognize a voice they're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And they say, that's the shepherd. Okay. Um, so I don't want to skip too much, but. Um, oh, you could camp, you could camp out here for a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So if you notice, John, there's no unbelieving sheep in this passage. It's mm -hmm. not people that are called sheep and, well, you're going to believe in a couple of years. You either believe or you don't at this point, uh, because they are believers in the father. So they're not unbelieving and they're being given to Jesus. This is the giving part from John chapter six, where, uh, where, they're, you know, those who are given to me will come to me. That th This is picking up on that idea, and it's fleshing it out in a different way, and it's affirming the interpretation I had before. Um, and I re just realized I'm doing that Donald Trump thing. So. <laughs> Be careful, man. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> okay, we're going to make it political. People are going to start tuning out. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, so uh, everyone who hears... Uh, oh, so uh, John chapter uh, 20, 10, verse 25 says, uh, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, and they know, I know them, and they follow me. Now, again, in, in verse, uh, in uh, John 18, 37, he says, uh, those who are of the truth hear my voice. Um, and we've already talked about the truth all the way in John chapter 3. People who follow the truth before Jesus comes, they see him and they believe in him in John 3, uh, 20. Mm -hmm. um, so, we, uh, so in John chapter 10, 8, this, this is just going to confirm what I've been saying. It says, uh, uh, all who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. So these, before Jesus came, there were sheep. And they didn't listen to anybody else because they were followers of God. Mm -hmm. They're not unbelieving uh, uh, individuals. They are people who are following God. And so they don't follow these other people because they're being protected by God through prevenient grace. But uh, 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 it's not like these are all uh, Bible scholars that have discerned what, what God is about and mm -hmm. what Christ is going to be about before he comes. Uh, th these are people who are being protected by God because they're, they're believing in God. And the sheep didn't listen to, to these other people that came before Christ. Um, they were prepared. Uh, when John came, they listened to him because God tells you who to listen to, right? Uh, he, but so, so they knew who to listen to when John came, but they didn't listen to these other people and they listened to Christ. Um, so, uh, uh, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Now, what's being alluded to here? He's alluding to Numbers 27. Um, and uh, he, he's saying, he's talking about sheep. And Numbers 27 talks about sheep and coming in and going out. And what it is, is it's a part where every Jew is going to know this part because it's a, it's a sad part of the story where Moses doesn't get to go into the promised land. And he tells God, please pick a shepherd, because I, I can't enter, and I'm going to die, and pick a shepherd for the sheep uh, to, to lead these people into the promised land. So there's a lot of imagery here. Jesus picked a really great verse, because these people are the sheep, and he's going to lead them into the promised land. So uh, here's Numbers 27. So oh, so up in chapter 10, I just read about the sheep, and he, they will come in and go out. So listen to the come in and go out here. Jesus, Moses said to the Lord, may the Lord, uh, uh, may the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and come in before them, who will lead them out and bring them in. So the Lord may, so the people, so the Lord's people will not be like sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus is saying in this context, he is the shepherd that they have been looking for. He is the shepherd, the ultimate shepherd. Uh, he's going to bring them in and out. And um, the interesting thing is, and I don't know if John was thinking of this, although 
God was probably thinking of it uh, when he wrote this is uh, the shepherd that was picked, his name is Joshua or Yeshua. Hmm. That is Jesus's name. Jesus is, that's his, his Hebrew name is okay. Yeshua. So the Yeshua has come. He's the ultimate Yeshua and he's bringing them out and they haven't listened to anybody else. So these are the ones he's going to come for. Um, and uh, so I, get, I just got a couple more verses and then we, we can wrap it up. Uh, we got well, time? Can, yeah. Can I just yeah. recap what you're saying so far? Sure. So Jesus is saying there are people that don't believe because they're not my sheep. And there are people that aren't his sheep because they haven't been given to him by the father. Now, the question is, who is the father giving to Jesus? And that is the people who have you might know, practicing, listening, faithful, um, but that have not or that are still waiting on their shepherd, um, you might say. And then this is already, uh, I guess, alluded to um, back in the beginning of John when Jesus is using what you know Moses was saying. Uh, this, back is the inauguration. this is the inauguration. This is a new covenant coming in. Okay. Into history. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I, in chapter five, I showed that Jesus is talking to people who don't believe, and he says, "You can believe." He, he, he unless he's he's being sarcastic, and, and I used to believe that. Um, but but we have it here in John ten too, in John uh, ten thirty seven, he says, "Do not believe me unless I do the works of my Father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works." that you may know and understand that the Father is in me. Mm -hmm. So these works are made to make people question and start to learn from the Father, to go back to the Father and learn. Now, if you think this is just a throwaway verse, this almost verbatim, or the general idea, is used again in John 14, 11. I won't read it because we don't have a lot of time. With the disciples, and Philip says, show us the Father. And Jesus says, don't you know I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? Uh, if you doubt, look at the, these miracles. And you will learn that I am the Father. And so, um, so let's end John chapter 10. He says, uh, here's what ends up at the John chapter 10. And this is really just kind of is the cherry on, on, the, on the cake. Um, we have John the Baptist. He returns, although not directly, uh, but he's mentioned. And he says, and Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days, where John has already plowed the field he's made the ground level he's you know uh and uh, and there jesus stayed and many people came to him and they said though john never performed a sign all that john has said about this man is true and in that place many believed in jesus this is what john chapter 10 is teaching this is what john chapter 6 is teaching this is what john chapter 5 is teaching this is what john chapter 3 is teaching this is what John chapter one is teaching. Um, yeah. so that's that's about it. I mean, I got a bunch of verses I could throw out about yeah. Abraham's children, but uh, we're out of time. Yeah, no, that that that's a good uh, good case. Um, I think to to be made there. A lot of stuff that I'm not thought about. If you guys have any questions for Luke, now's the time to send them in before we wrap this up. Um, Luke, where's the best place people can find you online or find some of the stuff that you write uh, written besides? Besides my YouTube channel, because I've had you on twice now. Okay, so Society of Evangelical Armenians uh, outreach page. Um, that's for anybody who wants to ask a question about Arminianism. It's not a place for debate. We got a whole bunch of web pages. I'm sorry, Facebook pages, or or uh, to debate theology. And if you wanted to debate me, I could. I I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> I'm not a. I'm not a. a, a, a someone who enjoys that, but like if. If you poke me, I, I wake up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if uh, if you have questions and you want something clarified, you can do it there. You can contact me on Facebook. I'm, my Facebook page is really just goofing off. Yeah. And it's I only have it because I need to communicate with my family through Messenger. And so I have a Facebook page. And it, it's Luke Gowdy. And you'll see a red door with Japanese wording on it and something funny. So you can look for that, Luke Gowdy. And if you want to contact me, fine. Uh, um, you can email me at lkgowdy at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter mm -hmm. if you want. Um, I don't what like is, Twitter. I don't think people should. Pardon me? I was gonna, what is that Japanese word on your Facebook? Uh, I don't speak Japanese. I, I can, uh, it, 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 it's Japanese sign, and then underneath it, it says panic carefully. Oh, okay. Uh, or maybe 
uh, yeah, or maybe that was, I can't remember what, I don't even remember what's on my own <laughs> Facebook page. That's how seriously I take it. But uh, so any of those ways, uh, mm -hmm. you can contact me. Um, if you know da Dr. David Paulman, uh, you can, uh, and you're confused, you can contact him and ask him which one I am. Uh, but if you go to Society of Evangelical oh. Armenians, yeah. uh, you can you can do that. Yeah, yeah. And this is a very helpful discussion. We didn't have any questions come in, though we do have a lot of people watching. Um, but I do just want to say, guys, if you're watching, that we'll be back on at 1.38 uh, p.m. Eastern time with Joe Dodson. And he's going to be talking about uh, Paul and ancient philosophy. So in what ways did or Paul or in what ways did Paul or um, in what ways didn't Paul uh, interact with the philosophies of his day? In which ways did he um, kind of concede to some of the philosophies of his day? In which way did he challenge the philosophies of his day? So I highly recommend you guys going on. Oh, Luke, um, I'm, I'm so sorry. I said there's no questions, but oh. uh, I, I, I was completely wrong. So, <laughs> uh, you want to do a few? Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So Nathan Hellrung just asked if you can recap briefly your position on Nehemiah. Oh, um, on, on the Nehemiah verse, I'm just showing that uh, um, that's the way the word out goes used. The, the draw is within the semantic range of what the normal Jew would use. That's from the Septuagint translation. So it was in Greek and it was uh, written by Jews. So uh, there you have uh, Nehemiah and Nehemiah 926 is where I would start reading. Mm -hmm. and, and these are disobedient people and, and uh, God doesn't have uh, many nice things to say about them. And uh, uh, verse 30 says, and many years you drew them, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and warn them with your spirit through your prophets, yet they would not give ear. Now I don't know how the translators will will um, uh, interpret Helco there, but the, here in this interpretation, uh, bore with them is is common. Gotcha. Uh, uh, but uh, you know the, the idea of bearing with them is he's working with them to get the job done, and they're not cooperating. Okay. Uh, so that's that was my point about Nehemiah. Not that me. Um, if you think that Jesus has this in his mind and he's alluding to it, that's one thing. Um, it's possible. I just don't see enough evidence. I'm just using it for semantic range argument. Okay. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Uh, uh, Jason Charles says, do you think that those who are given in verse 39 are everyone who beholds the sun in verse 40? In verse what? In verse 40 of John 40. 6. Oh, well, I actually, yeah. Go ahead, Luke. I think he's, uh, I, I think he's quoting from John 12, oh. maybe. In verse 40 of, of chapter 6? Yeah, that's, that's what it seemed like. Yeah. Um, yeah, for my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son believes and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him the last day. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Soteriology 101 says, I love the way you've gone through the whole Gospel of John. Look at Layton watching the channel. I appreciate that, Layton. Um, Layton, you got to tell people on your channel to come like my channel because uh, I, it seems like you're doing just a little bit better than me in terms of subscribers. Uh sure. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, everyone knows this is the best place to find theology, yes, but yeah, uh, late it's probably in the top 10, maybe. Uh, all right, I'm trying to find more questions, guys. If you have a question, type it in with question. Or I see a lot of comments. Uh, and I'm sorry, guys, for forgetting these um, so late. Uh, I was looking on my phone for comments, and none of them were popping up, and then I found like 20 <laughs> on the actual chat. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott Heath put, said, we're here for Nick 101. Nathan just said he subscribed. Layton said, smiley face emoji. Okay. All right. Well, hey man, that's all the time I'll I got that. today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all the time I got today. Uh, um, uh, so I'm going to be doing an outro for the YouTube video, but, um, we'll still be on Luke and I got some church work to do guys. So, uh, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, uh, share the content if you find it helpful. And um, also consider clicking any of the links in the description if you want to support me in furthering my education. I think I'll be starting my MA in philosophy of religion in the fall. 
depending on on scholarship money. So so yeah, guys, do all those things and check out the 130 live stream. All right, y'all have a blessed day. All right, so that's done.